We've kind of explored how the body can fold sort of side to side, but um, in a different pose, you might find that compression happening more um, front to back. Now, if you have a figure that's sort of seated, and you think about them kind of as a piece of paper, um, like a flat piece of paper, they could potentially fold up, right? And there'd be a fold here. It's kind of silly to think about, but um, it does kind of happen. I mean, it's, it's sort of like if you took an overall form piece of paper, folded it like that, it's sort of like the body is just kind of compressing. And so what you try to do is find the solidity of the rib cage, find the center line coming down, and you look for how that compression gets expressed. Usually there would be a pinch over here, and then you might find a sort of gathering of fabric or folds if it's a if they're closed. And you're going to do everything you can to kind of express that compression, right? So that's the compression front to back. And it's going to change the proportions a bit because you're shortening the spine. So what you're going to have to do is bring the pelvis up because you're rotating the pelvis, right? So the pelvis is now basically here. Right? So the pubic bone no longer hits neatly at this center line. It hit it hits up here. And then your rib cage is basically coming smack down, just sort of right on it. So there's not that gap. The gap between the rib cage and pelvis is only like one hand wide, so you're always looking for a very small gap between rib cage and pelvis. Um, so we have basically two concepts. Basically, we're working with balance so far, and we have compression and stretch. Because you'll notice that where you compress on one side, you stretch on the other, right? And so um, Will Weston, he says, you know, on this side, it's simple. On this side, it's complex because you have a lot of folds. Things happen there that don't normally happen.